Amen. Praise God. You may be seated in his presence. I'm excited about the word of God today. I believe that it will do exactly what the Father has deemed that it would do and that it will go forth and shall not return void and accomplish the thing whereunto it is sent. Amen. Look at someone and say that I am a child of the almighty living God. Amen. We have been teaching on the subject, the fruit of faith. We're in part four of of a continuous subject on the fruit of faith, on the fruit of faith. And so in that, uh, we've learned several things, and uh, we learned that God wants us to not only to live by faith and walk by faith, but we learned that there are three types of faith, and um, uh, we'd like to take a moment to review. And we said that there are three types of faith. The first type of faith is the faith that we're going to use, and we're going to use it one time in our life. And praise be to God, because of God, we only have to use it once. And that's called saving faith, saving faith. In other words, that I'll use faith to get saved. It's faith unto salvation. And the word of God declares that if any man be in Christ Jesus, behold, old things are passed away, all things are become new. And so what God begins to do uh, when I get saved, that is he seals my soul until the day of redemption. And so therefore, I, I never have to use this faith again because at that point, the Holy Spirit, he comes in and my vessel becomes his dwelling place. And so because my vessel is his dwelling place, he seals my spirit, man, until the day of redemption. It's called being born again, being born again. When that happens, I become a child of God. The word of God declares that I have been adopted into the family of God. The good thing is that God never, ever gives his children away. He doesn't cast them to a side. Uh, he doesn't divorce the family. Uh, he doesn't separate himself. He doesn't get mad and say, you're no longer in the family. He doesn't take your name, his name away. We're always a child of God. Amen. Amen. And then we said the second type of faith is a faith that we're going to be talking about today. It's called operating faith. Operating faith is a very, very important faith. We said that it is the faith that we use in our life every day in which we please God. And so when we talk about living by faith, operating in faith, this is a faith that I got to use every day to get through life. This is the faith that we use to deal with challenges, situations, circumstances, burdens, relationship issues, dealing with financial uh, needs, sickness, disease, whatever it might be. This is the kind of faith that we use 90% of our life, 90% of our life. Uh, we'll use saving faith once. And then the third type of faith is the miraculous realm of faith. This is a faith that after you have learned to walk and you become a child of God, you become actually what the Word of God refers in this nature. We'll see when we get to the miraculous realm. That's when you move to the level of a son or a daughter of God. In other words, you, you move to a level of stewardship that God can trust you with, with things and, and God can cause you uh, 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 to, to use faith at a whole nother level to where miracles and signs and wonders are, are manifested because you simply speak the word and the word that God gives you concerning his needs and desires and that anointing falls upon you at a whole nother level. Most believers don't operate at this level of faith, not because they can't, not because God has selected certain individuals, but this is an area that through proving myself and operating faith on a day-to-day -day basis, that I prove myself responsible. I prove, prove myself qualified. And so as I do that, and it's not a matter of proving myself qualified or, or that I become so good, it just means that I become trustworthy. Uh, God doesn't have a problem giving anyone anything. He has one question, can I trust you? Right. Amen? Amen. So, so really, we move to a trust factor. Our trust factor becomes much greater. And, and, and thanks be to God, through operating faith, each and every one of us have an opportunity to move at this level. And then we went on and we said that uh, to operate uh, with God-desired kind of faith, believing faith, my hope needs uh, four effective elements. And so uh, there are four things that I'm going to need if I'm going to operate in what we call operating faith. If I'm going to use that second kind of faith on a day-to-day -day basis, there's four elements. I must desire to please God with my faith. That's the first element. It's just like mixing chemicals together. And when you mix all the chemicals together, they're no longer one chemical uh, uh, alone, but they have changed their state. This is just like your faith. 
when you mix wisdom, knowledge, and understanding together, all of a sudden now, it, 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 it consists of a power different than just what knowledge was alone. It consists of a power different than what wisdom would have been alone. My wife and I were talking just the other day, and I, I was sharing with her uh, uh, that uh, I found out that wisdom, the wisdom that comes from God is an anointing that because you have been faithful and you have exercised faith in a certain area or arena, that then you can do things that other people think is easy to do, but they find that they can't do it, but they don't know what you've been mixing. The word of God says, uh, the word of God went forth and it profited some and others it didn't profit. But the ones that it profited was those who mixed the word in which they heard with faith. So now watch this. In my life, when I uh, uh, begin to come to a place that I'm willing to, to, to surrender my life to glorify God, I'll trigger the supernatural power of God and the grace of God to bring the promises of God uh, to pass. Uh, sometimes I find even with Christians, they'll see one Christian do something or, or they'll look at someone's ministry or they'll look at what they're doing in a particular call of their life. And then other people will try to imitate it because they think, well, he's doing it or he's doing it. Or even people close to them will say, well, I see what they're doing. Oh, that's real easy. I could do that. Well, watch this. You don't know what it took for that manifestation to occur. Oh, come on, somebody. There is an anointing and a wisdom, and, it come, and the Word of God says there's a wisdom that comes from God. There's a wisdom that comes from God. And so we're going to be talking about, as we move forward, we're going to be talking about, watch this, the state or the mixture of the anointing. And there's not a lot of teaching on this in the body of Christ, but, but there are different anointings. <laughs> in Bible study, we're talking about uh, uh, faith, the faith of leadership, talking about uh, uh, change and transitioning as a leader in God. And we're talking about the story of Joshua. But a lot of folk don't understand, there's a Joshua anointing. There's a Davidic anointing. There's an Abrahamic anointing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There was a Zerubbabel anointing. It shall not be by might. It shall not be by power, but it shall be by my spirit. In other words, what, what, what the angel was telling Zerubbabel, there's going to be a particular anointing to break that. And see, you're dealing with something right now, and it's going to take you operating in faith to get it, but you must understand there's going to, it's going to be required a particular anointing, a yoke-destroying, burden-removing power of God. Yes, that's a mixture, but it's when you mix your faith with a particular element, and that's why covetousness is such a dangerous thing, to covet what somebody has. I was in a meeting and dealing with government, and, and, and one day there was an individual there, uh, they knew me as pastor, but they didn't know the king's anointing in my life. I operate in the apostolic, both as a king and priest. And they heard me talking to the government and, and, and the demonstration of what was the vision on this ministry. And, and they were really surprised that I was able to communicate. But they, what they didn't understand, there's an anointing in my life of wisdom that comes from God. So God will allow me to assess a room real quick. I was telling someone one time when I went to an event, I said, I need to see the people. They thought I wanted to look at the physical people. No, I need to assess the spirits in the room. Right, right. Oh, that I I need to assess the spirits. The word of God says, try every spirit to see whether they're true or whether they're alive. And so therefore, I, I, I assess the spirits. And so by the time the conversation was going on, God allowed me to assess each and every person and to know where they were but to understand where they needed to go. And then God showed me how they couldn't get there. And then the anointing fell, the anointing of wisdom to talk about the end result. And when I talked about the end result, everything came together. And then they began to draw off of the anointing. Now, they didn't know that naturally. Look at somebody say, God's working things towards me. Towards my good. And towards my favor. See, God wants to orchestrate things. God wants to do something in your life and with your life that God will cause things to lean towards you. But it's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by his spirit. There is a particular anointing in this day and age right now 
The faith you used a year ago, the faith you used three years ago, the faith the church used 10 years ago is not applicable for today. It requires a different mixture. That, oh, come on, somebody. That's why we're changing things. That's why we're moving by the Spirit. Why? Because it's a mixture. There's an anointing. There's a power that's required that transcends religion. Religion will not break anything today. As a matter of fact, the devil is counting on us to continue to walk in disobedience, to walk in our old ways, to walk as we would and not walk according to the wisdom that cometh from above. That's why you need the wisdom of, that comes from above. You need a yoke to storm, burden, removing power to keep your family together. Because your children are getting knowledge from the world. And what's going to break that yoke of that knowledge is wisdom that comes from above. <laughs> when you get the anointing, you need to know all four factors. We left off talking about one. We said, but it must bring to God with all that is within me. I must give it all I got. In other words, I must have a warrior's live or die attitude. God's looking for warriors, people that won't flinch in a faith fight, people that won't run out on him, people that, see, see, a warrior's attitude, when you get to this level of operating faith, it borderlines, because this is what we're going to deal with next, the miraculous realm. And I think what's happening in this day and age, from what I am sensing in the spirit realm, that the miraculous it, it, watch this. I, I got to first say this. Let me back up. While these may seem to be the worst of times, these are actually the best of times. Oh, Lord God. And the natural is the worst of times. In the spirit realm, it's the best of times. Because God said, in, 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 in the latter days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon Oh, you better catch this revelation. Upon all flesh. Go to Acts. Ooh, blessed are the eyes of see. I want you to do me a favor. Uh, we provided for you, for your convenience, some bags. Everyone in this church, you have a bag underneath your chair. It is actually called a barf bag. Now, the barf bag is what you're going to use to throw up some stuff. And, and, and before we move forward, you're going to have to throw up some stuff. You, you ever got sick and you knew someone sour on your stomach and, and you know, you, know you, you were putting it off trying to deal with it, but you really knew the only way you were going to feel better is if you got it off your stomach. Uh, see, some of you have been given some bad knowledge that came out of the church. Some of you have been eat, used to eating junk food. Oh. Do, do you know if you eat junk food all the time, do you know your body actually will develop a dependency upon that toxification? And then you turn around and eat some spinach. Your stomach started gurgling. All right. You eat some broccoli and stuff start bubbling. And that's because you have been used to some old things. Right. So I want you to pull a bag from underneath your seat. It's an imaginary bag, but it's there. It's a, it's a faith bag. And I want you to go, Because ah! <laughs> I need you to get some of that stuff off your stomach. Before I give you some new spiritual food. Now, now you must understand. It's only new in the spirit realm. But it's not new from God. In the spirit realm. It has been reserved for you. Because some of you are dealing with things in your life. It borderlines operating faith in the miraculous realm of faith. And, and, and in these days and in these times. As Christ is coming. There's going to be a greater outpouring of his anointing. But now what you got to understand, it's not just an outpouring of his anointing upon certain people. 
But there's an outpouring of his anointing all over the earth. Ah, ah, here, here we go. Here we go. Because he needs his children to exercise authority. Here we go. Are you in uh, second, uh, second, uh, second chapter of Acts? Let's take a look at verse 14. And Peter standing up and the eleven lifted up their voices and said unto them, Ye men of Galilee and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. Hearken unto my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. In other words, he says, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, we ain't all drunk. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now, there was a Joel anointing in that time. There was an anointing upon Joel concerning prophecy, concerning the breaking, the breaking, the breaking of strongholds. Now, watch this. He said, verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joe, and that it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass in the last days. Look at somebody say, that's right now. That's right now. Watch what he says. Saith God. Now this is, this is going to get good. Saith who? God. Saith who? God. I will pour out of my... I'll pour out of my Spirit. upon and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my servants on my servants and my handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show, here it goes, here it goes, here it goes. I will show what? Wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. And the sun shall turn into darkness and the moon into, watch this, and the moon into, that has to do with the last tetrot we just dealt with, the four blood moons. We are in a state right now. Oh, we are in a state, right? The church, America, is asleep, and heaven is shaking, and the earth is moving, and all of heaven is declaring God's glory. The mountains from the South Pole to the North Pole, they're melting. Animals are, 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 are just transitioning from one place to another place. The bees have lost direction. The most wisest creatures, the ants right now, are without purpose. The earth, watch this, is groaning. Is groaning for the coming of the Lord. And the word of God says that if we don't praise them, the rocks will cry out. Earthquakes in diverse places. Tsunamis all over the world. And at time as we know it is shifting. And the church is still playing religion. Still playing politics. Preachers are still polit pol uh, uh, operating in politics. We are asleep, playing games. And watch this. We're moving to a level that it won't be enough to live and make it with operating faith. You're going to have to move to a level to operate in the miraculous realm of faith. Eleven years ago, there was a fire. They call it the Irwindale Fire. And during the Irwindale Fire, the mountains over here in Rancho Cucamonga all got caught on fire, and it spread it all the way through Upland, Claremont. In the backyard of where I live, on the other side is the mountains, the forest area, San Bernardino Forest area. And it was the most brushed area that was near us. And it could burn continuously. So it was even making back, uh, backdrop fires and trying to burn the brush to reduce the fuel. And this went on about a week. And I never forget at that time while it was all going on, they had evacuated where we were, my house and the houses around us. And during that time, all, we heard a bunch of noise and the bamming on the doors and the fire department came saying, get out, get out, get out. And uh, my wife looked at me, and we opened up the back door on the balcony, and the flames literally, the heat almost pushed us back in the house. 
And I never forget, my wife looked at me and I looked at her. She said, are you clean? I said, yeah, are you clean? You, you, look. See, some of you are dealing with some life-threatening issues. And I'm talking about you got to have a warrior's attitude. you got to have a life or death disposition. See, when you have a life or death disposition, see, see, you need to go home and clarify some things in your life. You need to make sure you're clean. There will be inherent challenges, challenges of the time, but you better be clean. And so my wife, she asked me if I was clean. I asked her if she was clean. She said, well, let's pray. We got done praying, and she looked at me, and she said, what are we going to do? I said, we ain't going to go nowhere. We're going to declare the word of God. We're going to raise a standard. Yeah. Fire department came down, and they said, they said uh, uh, Pastor, are you leaving? They know who I was. They said, Pastor, are you leaving? I said, no, we ain't leaving. I said, we got to stop this fire. He looked at me and said, what? I said, we got to stop the fire. He said, well, we'll be here. We'll take care of things, but don't worry about the property. I said, no, no, you're going to try to put it out. We're going to stop it. Yeah. All of my neighbors, we looked up, Joyce say, you, you got to come downstairs, baby. All the neighbors in the front yard. <laughs> when there's a true anointing on your life, it will trap the world. Ah. Oh, Lord God. Let, let me tell you something. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. We're going to look at it a little later. The word of God says that he's given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means shall hurt you. See, you got, you got to understand what the anointing is not designed to do. When you mix the anointing properly, you got to understand something. There is no power above you that can destroy you. God gave me revelation, and, and he told me, he said, you're going to stop that fire by putting, putting it up under your feet. Yeah. I was, I, you know, and I'm just, just telling you what God told me to do. I went outside, and I began to lift my hands towards heaven and declare the glory of God. I began to walk around the property seven times because my neighbors wanted to know what we're going to do. Fireman, I told them, you got to leave. They said, no, it's not mandatory. It's voluntary. We're going to find out what Pastor Chris is going to do. Now, keep in mind, these are people that didn't talk to me on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, some of them, they'd be outside watering the flowers and stuff. I'll look and wave, and they turn their head, act like, you know, it's, you don't know what I'm talking about. See, be, see, because my complexion, I look a little short to them. But when times of trouble came, they ran to my house like Hobad, just like Moses looked to Jethro Hobad. He said, oh, you, you might be a little dark, you might be a little short, but God said, look to Hobad, he's your spiritual eyes. And I began to look up and God says, look up and give me praise. He said, but concerning putting this fire out and stopping it, he says, I want you to look down. Oh, Lord God. He said, I told you, you have power and authority over all scorpions and serpents. He said, Chris, I want, I, I'm going to teach you today in the miraculous realm to move up to that level. You got to learn how to put stuff under your. See, you've been dealing with your problems, but you've been dealing with the wrong way. Oh, just, just take it in by your spirit right now. Just let your spirit drink. You've been, dealing with, you've, you've been dealing with your worries. You've been dealing with your problems right here. The miraculous realm of faith operates when you look at it under your feet. You've been giving your problems, you've been giving your worries, watch this, too much authority in your life. Watch this. I, I, I must keep in bringing it to God. I must keep bringing it to God with all I have until I receive it. There was a misnomer God told me when, when we were going through this fire. God said, Chris, he said, I want you to stand on your watch. I want you to stand on your watch. My job was to watch that fire, and I would walk around seven times. Declaring God glory. It was burning all over the place. People were leaving. Matter of fact, 
had the fire department. As a matter of fact, they camped out at my front, at my, my house. They was using the bathroom. Neighbors was bringing them sandwiches and everything and so forth. And one of the neighbors said, we're we going to feed the people. Pastor Chris, what do you want to do? I said, well, I'm letting them stay here. Y'all can feed them. I mean, literally, they're taking naps in the backyard because, I mean, it was working 24-7. Thank God for them. They did a great job. And then we got to the final climax. Look at point number two. Concerning the fire. I operate with God desire, believing faith. I must operate with the authority as a believer. And this pushes me over into the miraculous realm. And so all of a sudden, the fire is burning. And at about 2 o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden, they were, I hear the police department. I hear, you know, people tell, be, uh, telling folk to halt the whole bit. One of my neighbors had left. They were looting their house while the fire was burning up. Folk inside. I mean, I'm just giving you the backdrop of how much was going on at a time. Hallelujah. Praise God. You say, Pastor, you wasn't leaving? Oh, well, no. The Lord told me. To stand guard and to stand watch. To stand guard and stand watch. And so the fire department said, I suggest you, Pastor, load up some stuff in your car. This, fire, this thing is getting bad. We don't even know if we can stop it. And I told them, I said, well, I, I put a few things in the truck. They said, what, what do you have in there? I said, I have some pictures and some valuables and so forth. They said, you didn't leave any firearms or anything in the house. I said, oh, yeah. He says, well, you know, uh, you know, people are looting stuff. You might want to take that out. I said, no, I can't take that out. He says, why? I said, because the Lord told me to watch and pray. <laughs> no, you'll catch it on the way home. <laughs> See, until you get a warrior's mentality. Right. You say, Pastor, would you, would you actually fire a firearm at somebody and hurt them? No, I'll take them out if, if they're coming in trying to hurt me or my family. See, watch this. You got to understand with the devil, you, you can't just get them off you. I'm just using this as you can't get them off you. And so about 2 o'clock in the morning, the fire got so, bit, so bad on this given day. When I opened up the door this time, the heat hit the door and began to melt the internal paint. It was that hot. It singed all, all of the hair on my arms. We closed and my wife said, what are you going to do? I said, I got to go outside. I had my old uh, military coat at that time, my uh, flight jacket. I put my flight jacket on, the one I had from the Air Force. I put uh, the hoodie over my face, a hat on. I said, I got to go out there one more time and give a shot. All of a sudden, they begin to roll the engines. They begin to blow the siren. At the very top, literally, if you were in my backyard, you can do just like this. And right at the top is Cucamonga Peak, the highest point around here. A ball of fire began to roll down the hill. A ball of fire. This thing, they don't even know how big it was. I went out there, garbed up, and I said, Father, in the name of Jesus. I speak to the atmosphere. I speak to the stratosphere. I speak to oxygen. I speak to the fuel thereof. And I cause this thing demolished right now. I cause it to disperse, disperse in the heavens. I thank you, Lord, that this region is saved. And I raise a border and a standard against the enemy. We call things that be not. And this thing is rolling down. You say, Pastor, you wasn't afraid? Hell yeah, I was afraid. Tell it to me. I say, hell yeah. I'll, in other words, I'm not cussing here what I'm saying. Hell was bringing fear. Was I feeling it in the natural? Yes, I was. But I walked by faith and not by sight. And I understood that I had to raise a standard against the enemy. That God wanted to do something greater than me, greater than my house, greater than my situation, greater than my standard. God wanted a testimony. God wanted to raise someone up that he could use that they would all know it was God. That thing got about 40 feet from the side of my, my fence. That thing hopped up in the air, went over my house, went over the houses of the people, and it just burst in the air, and the fumes came down, and they melted. The oxygen was taken away. 
Brush fell in the streets. Brush fell on our houses. It singed the back wall of my house. It may have singed me. Watch this. You might be going through something. And it looks like it's going to singe you. Well, watch this. It singed us. But watch this. It didn't cause us to smell. It didn't burn us up like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, Lord God. You threw me in a furnace. But i tell you what. I might come out. But I won't have the smell of smoke on me. And that day, all of our neighbors believed. From that day forward, the fire department. And later on, God would use me to write some programs with the city. And, and, and one of the city managers asked, well, you know, we're supposed to go over here to church, want to do this, but we don't really know. We ain't never seen a church write a public program like that and do those kind of things. The captain, oh, Lord, I ain't going to mention his name. We want to take, but the captain told me, he said, oh, you might want to believe that man. Amen. Oh, come on. <laughs> they say, you might want to believe him. They say, well, we ain't never seen the church do that. They say, oh, yeah, he done done a whole lot of things you ain't seen. <laughs> the fire. Outside of my little quarter where we were, every house was spared. And they burned up houses on both sides of us. The ball dispersed. And they shattered to two sides and burned up houses on both sides of our track. But it didn't come nigh us. It didn't hurt us. Notice what it didn't come nigh. It didn't come nigh our, say that again my dwelling place. Now, as I close, you, you, you know, you got to get, you got to get to a point you're going to decide where you're going to dwell. <laughs> oh, Lord God. And, and, and when I was stepping out, fear tried to tell me, well, you know, you're going to burn up out here just by the fire. And the Lord said, there may be a fire outside, but I have a shadow. Those that dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, Bible readers. Hallelujah. Where are you dwelling right now? You don't have time to pray. You don't have time to worship. Let me tell you something. You don't have time not to pray. You don't have time not to worship. You got to determine you're going to walk above or you're going to walk beneath. I'll break it down for you. You see, what your problem really is, is a podium. See, see that fire, what the devil meant for evil, God was meaning for good. God wanted me to step up. Because that day after it was all said, I didn't look short to nobody. He broke down the walls. He broke down the barriers. They found out I was a nice people, a nice person. And I found out some of them was good people too. I had one of my neighbors. I can tell the story. They've been gone for a minute now. She was. I ain't gonna hold back because you came to the church the truth. She was living in a house next door. The man who was living in the house, they left it to be understood they were husband and wife. Multi-millionaire. I mean, this man was, his loaded was loaded. Bought the house cash. The woman looked like she was something that came out of Vogue magazine. But she didn't feel comfortable in talking to the next other neighbor. She lived right on the back side of it. She said, when is, uh, and then, one day it was burning. Our church was in Pomona at the time. <laughs> While the fire was before the ball came, the day before the ball, the fire's everywhere. And so I was helping her out, and I was ministering to this woman. And she, I began to win her confidence in it. And so she would come and ask George, she says, uh, where's your husband? I need help. This is burning. That was burning. Well, he was out of town on business. Kind of found out it wasn't his wife. She was his mistress. 
and so and so meanwhile it came on, on, on that Sunday morning before the ball would come down on Monday they always asking what am I gonna do and I said I'm going to church <laughs> I told Joyce I was getting across I said, give them the address 312 East 10th Street Pomona <laughs> None of them came to church. I went to church. I came back home. As soon as I got back home, she was waiting in the front yard. She says, she says Chris, can you help me do such and such? I said, yeah. I'm out there helping her water, wetting down the backyard. God said, this is, this is why I allowed you to do what you did. Tell her I love her. I said, we were watering. I said, you know the Lord loves you, huh? She says, well, you know, I began to talk about the things she's been through in her life. I said, you know God loves you. She says, yeah. I said, you know this fire that's burning is on the outside. I said, I I'll help you with this and you're going to be safe. I said, but this fire will be put out and stopped. But there's a, a fire burning on the inside of you. I said, God loves you and you're valuable. I said, you need to leave this man. She looked at me. See, some of you, you're like, Pastor, where did this come from? Remember what I started off with? Are you clean? And I told her, I said, God loves you. She said, I, I, I would, but I don't know what to do with my life. And I told her, I said, give that to God. Fire was over. He came back into town. On a chain of restaurants, if I told you, everybody would know of the restaurants. He knocked on the door. He said, hello, Chris, how you doing? I said, I'm fine. How you doing? He said, I, I, I'm just curious. I'm looking for so-and-so. Uh, did you see her? And I, uh, uh, I've been calling the last couple days. I said, oh, she gone. <laughs> He said, do you know where she went? I said, no. He put his head down and he walked away. He said, do you have anything to do with this? I said. <laughs> She's doing very well now. And so is he. He returned back to his family, built a new house, repented. See, sometimes, Pastor, what are you trying to say? Sometimes external things happen in your life to bring you to an eternal revelation. I asked God, I said, that fire, why, why then? And I never forget before he left and it first started burning, it was on the Irwindale side. You know what he said? He said something, didn't even know what he said. He said, yeah, that fire reached around here. I said, how you know? He said, well, look at all the fuel. And he said, after it burned, we'll be good for about 25 years. He had this thing calculated. I think his house was the reason the fire came. You say, come on, Pastor. You say, nope, 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 nope. You got to understand, fire is designed to purify. <laughs> Can I be candid with you? See, we're teaching on something right now that most pastors, they don't want to touch. But some of you might get offended or feel a little shy skittish and may not come back to church. But God is concerned about you at a greater level. At a level you could never imagine. And there's nothing, hear me, there's nothing you could ever do that would cause him to quit loving you. There is nothing you could ever do that would cause him to quit calling you, beckoning you, 
And God loves you with a love that is incomprehensible. Like a father in a child relationship, I don't care what my daughters would ever do in life. There is nothing that they could ever do that would cause me to reject them, cause me to disown them, cause me to break relationship. I don't care. Whatever they do, they're still my children. Good, bad, or indifferent. I got their backs. He's got yours. He wants to bring you to a whole nother level. He wants to put out the fire in your life so he can reconstruct and build anew. He wants to build something so fresh, so brilliant. And, he, and you know what? Here's the awesome part. Because when he does it in your life, you know and everybody else will know that it was the Lord. And then when folk come to you and say, I thought, I thought, I thought, and you just look at them and say, I don't know them anymore. I don't, you say, Pastor, it's going to hurt if I change right now. Watch this, it's going to kill you if you don't. <laughs> you don't have to let die what God wants to let live. Oh, how sweet it is to be in his presence. To all, to him all I owe. To him all I owe. To him all I owe. God is just asking. He knows your hurts. He knows your pain. But God is just simply saying, will you trust me? Will you trust me? See, you got to trust him more than your friends. More than your wife. More than your husband. More than your children. Matter of fact, I... I <laughs> I got a minute or two. Matter of fact, I found out something. Any of you ever, before you got married, or you remember dating? And uh, you know how you, 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 the person you're dating, they may have friends or family. And, you know, when you first start dating, there's always somebody around. You know how it is. You go over and, you know, you, you in a family room and even this crazy dog that won't leave you alone. Just, uh, just all somebody around. <laughs> and, and then you get to a point in your mind when you feel, wow, well, I kind of like this person. Then all of a sudden you're kind of looking for time to be alone. And so now when you call, yeah, so uh, your brother and his wife, they're going to be over tonight uh, or not. No, they ain't coming by. No, it's just going to be me and my mom here. Okay, yeah, what time I see? So we get close, it's just mom there. And then finally you get to a point where, where, where you're just alone. You've been talking alone on the phone, but it's just the two of you. And you can look in the white of each other's eye. And now all of a sudden the relationship goes to a whole nother level. And through, through, through some occasions where you're alone with each other, you begin to grow, grow closer. Until you get to a place to where you're used to being alone with God. See, because see, if you still need other people to validate your relationship, you don't pray with him, you don't worship him without other people around. Because watch this. You'll find. Your being alone with God is directly proportional to you being with him. Matter of fact, God says, until you get alone with me, you put them before me. 
Now, you, you're, 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 you're uh, 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 clapping and praising God, and I thank you and appreciate it, but that wasn't the main reason I gave you the testimony about the Irwindale fire. You see, the part you, you're not hearing is the days my wife told me, you better be right. Now, she had my back, but she was like, you know, you better be hearing from God on this. <laughs> you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't understand. Because if that house would have burned up all of our stuff, she, they wouldn't have been the only one looking at me short. She'd be like, look what you done did. <laughs> <laughs> you done got all our stuff burned up. See, sometimes when you get alone with God, the stuff you do going to look foolish to people. Oh, you, you're not listening to me. It, it, it ain't going to make sense. As a matter of fact, then most of them folk thought I was crazy, lost my mind. Neighbors, some of them, was talking about me. Fire department telling me, well, well look, I tell you what, then okay, you can take that stand if you want. I thought it was really ironic. They told me that one day and told me if, it, if, I, if I get in trouble and something happened to me or my family, it's all my fault, my responsibility. But two days later, you got to stay in my backyard. <laughs> what has God told you lately? That you pondered in your heart, but if I do it, I'm going to risk losing this. If I do it, they're going to think I'm crazy. If I do it, I might lose this person. If I do it, it might cost me this. I tell you, if you can keep all of that stuff, you'll never experience the miraculous realm. God wants to get you to a place where all you have, all you can feel, all you can trust is him. And some of us are at a point, you know good and well, even your operating faith has not gotten you over. Here's your revelation today. Your operating faith and believing for what you've been dealing with have not been the answer to it. That's because you need a miracle. I'm just keep it real. Some of your families, in order to come back, it's going to take a miracle. For some of your finances to be revived, it's going to take a miracle. For some of you, health-wise, to get that peace back, to get, you, get your stomach back in shape to where your bowels will move again, it's going to take a miracle. To leave them migraine headaches, it's going to take a miracle. To get to the point where you want to get up the next day to face, to look at the sunshine. You want to keep the blinds closed. You want to keep the drapes drawn. You don't even want to see sunlight because sunlight represents a brand new day. And you can't see it because it's going to take a miracle. But I got a word for you. There is a day that the Lord hath made and we'll rejoice and we'll be glad in it. And he'll give us back the day that the locusts have eaten and a cake of worm has stirred. I'm excited. And the devil is up under my feet. Let's give God glory in this place. I said give him glory. Give him some praise up in here. Hallelujah. Oh, he's a good God. Amen. You may be seated. What time is the life way? Time to sow seed into the kingdom. Time to give a portion unto the Lord of what he so richly, graciously, and faithfully hath given unto us. As we lift our tithes and as we lift our offerings, let us remember the word of God says that when we give unto him our tithes and our offerings, he'll open up the window of heaven. And he'll pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. And I want you to understand something. The blessing of God is that which is applicable and needed for our life. Sometimes it's not money. Sometimes it's other.